When you write a computer program, you don't start with writing code. You first work through your design process to explore what problem you're trying to address, coming up with your initial high-level solution, and then breaking it down, decomposing it into smaller problems. For each of those smaller problems, you think about what information or data that you need to solve that problem. And then you start thinking about the different steps that you might take. For example, if you are navigating a robot through a maze, you might start by breaking down the problem into a series of smaller problems, entering the maze and then repeatedly seeing what directions you can move to, and then choosing a direction to actually go. You might employ a strategy such as always turning left where you are able to, or indeed selecting randomly. Each of these problems can be explored in turn and you can develop algorithms for each describing how you might solve them. There are many different methods that you can use to describe your algorithms, some of which we looked at in our foundations course. We explored the use of explicit instructions and different ways that we could explore ordering instructions, including a range of activities where students create a set of instructions for an everyday task or perhaps follow another student's instructions. A beautiful example from the early years shared by Jasmine Smearden involved building a series of algorithm and instruction sequencing activities integrated with literacy development by exploring the sequence of events contained within the Rosie's Walk storybook by Pat Hutchins. Jasmine explores a range of activities within her example, teaching sequencing as well as mapping, location and positional language. After reading the story as a class, students were given pictures from the story and asked to put them into the correct sequence. Jasmine followed this by providing a picture of a barnyard, positioning Rosie within the barnyard and then asking her students to come up with a correct sequence of instructions to find Rosie. If you were to do this in your classroom, you might think about different ways that you could describe those instructions or your algorithm. In the early years, much of our work with algorithms relates to instruction ordering or navigational language, so perhaps we could write or represent our algorithms using pictures that describe our instructions. This might take the form of pictures from our story, as Jasmine explored, or it might be navigational images, or perhaps even images that describe a sequence of movements. We also looked at visual ways of exploring instructions, including the use of flowcharts to describe instruction flow. Here we have a few examples from our digital technologies community, where flowcharts have been used to describe everyday or classroom situations. Taryn Harridan developed a beautiful example of a flowchart that describes the steps involved in packing up the classroom at the end of the day while Tanya Schultz created this gorgeous example describing healthy food choices in a unit on healthy lifestyle choices. These examples demonstrate how we can explore instructions and sequencing in the general sense without having to use a specific programming language. We are using images or language that students are already familiar with and without any need for formal structure. As we move to using programming languages, whether they be visual programming languages or general purpose programming languages in later years, it is important that students become familiar with how to use that language. For example, in order to write a scratch program, students need to understand what each of the scratch blocks is for and how it is to be used.